Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're going to talk about Yoimiya. If you don't know, Yoimiya is the next 5-star character on the next banner. She's going to be a 5-star pyro archer who we actually get to trial during her story quest. And so in this video, we get a look at Yoimiya's official kit. We get to look at all her talents, you know, abilities, and the scalings on the abilities. So we get to evaluate just how powerful uh, this character is. And what we are going to be doing is basically a first look at her whole kit, looking at how the character is built and how she's meant to be played. And so I'm going to be testing her for the first time, sort of live, and give you guys my thoughts on her. But we're also going to be sort of theory crafting in what comps she's going to be optimal in and try to evaluate her strength and her potential as a character. Do keep in mind a couple of things, however. Number one, this test run could be misleading because of, uh, I do believe she has some constellations and her artifact set is like a support set. So it is a really weird environment that this test run is, which is why we're going to be more focused on this character's potential, looking at her actual talents, uh, the scalings on it, and in what team comps she can shine. So this is going to be a more general review and obviously i will be showcasing yoimiya like gameplay we'll be using her in the trial so you'll get to see her abilities in action but this video will mainly be focused on yoimiya as a character looking at her talents power level and also a brief analysis of what builds you know what artifact sets could be good on her when she comes out so you guys can start farming now and preparing for her also while i will as i mentioned comment on her power level it is still very early access so it is quite hard to evaluate that from a trial so keep that in mind with that being said let's get into it Alright, so now let's talk about Yoimiya's talents and the scalings on her abilities. We're going to start with her elemental skill, burst, uh, and then we'll talk about her passive talents and her normal and charge attacks. So first of all, for her elemental skill, this is an ability that will infuse your normal attacks with pyro. This looks really cool, and we're going to test it out in a little, but basically your normal attacks will all be dealing pyro damage, which is great for a pyro character. As you can see, it says that Yoimiya's normal attacks will be blazing arrows and their damage will be converted to pyro damage uh, and also increase. So this is pretty nice. It increases your normal attack damage by quite a significant amount and it lasts for 10 out of the 18 seconds. So you'll notice right away that this ability is pretty much similar to Hu Tao's E, where her attacks become infused with pyro, and it is very nice because it allows you to apply pyro very fast and hopefully proc some strong reactions. And we'll obviously test this out against enemies in a little, but first, I do want to talk about Elemental Burst. So it seems that when you use this ability, you're going to fire some rockets dealing AoE pyro damage, and you also mark one of the opponents. What that Aura's Blaze mark does is actually every time another party member does a normal charge plunge uh, attack or a skill or a burst it will trigger an explosion that does pyro damage so this blaze effect seems like a more support or burst support ability because whenever another party member right that isn't yoimiya does do one of these attacks basically anything they will also take another instance of pyro damage, which looks quite strong. As you can see, the skill damage itself is 178, but the Aura's Blaze damage actually hits multiple times. See, 171% scaling at level 6 is not bad, considering the fact that it can be triggered every 2 seconds. And it does seem to be an off-field ability because it's whenever another character uh, does deal damage. Do keep in mind that the duration is 10 seconds out of the 15, that's the cooldown, and it, it only has an energy cost of 60, which usually isn't too hard to get. The Aura's Blaze that you mark a target with sort of enables a more quick swappy or a support playstyle. We're going to have to test a lot of different comps when she comes out because marking one target and dealing a bunch of power damage from off field could be nice if you're using your burst on Yoimiya and then swapping out. So it definitely can enable other playstyles that we will have to test in the future. Before we go and test these out, I do want to mention that her passive talents seem pretty strong. Her first one will buff her elemental skills normal attacks. Basically, every time you normal attack, you will gain 2% power damage bonus on hit. This lasts for 3 seconds and can have up to 10 stacks, which is pretty huge, giving you a maximum of 20%. The second passive talent gives you an attack percent buff when you use your burst. Effectively, when you use your burst, all your other party members gain 10% attack for 15 seconds, and they also gain even more attack based on how many stacks you gained uh, with your other passive. So it is at least 10% attack, and then you gain another 1% for every stack um, of Tricks of the Troublemaker. So overall, her kit seems pretty good, but we do have to test it. The 158% normal attack damage at level 9 is a really great increase to a main DPS auto attacker, but it looks like your elemental burst main damage comes from this off-field effect that will help your other party members. So this makes me think that she can either be played as both a DPS and a support, or maybe uh, as a DPS for the rotation of her skill, right, for this 10 second uptime, and then you use your burst and swap out and let your uh, other party members deal some more damage. Now quickly, right before we go into testing her actual skills, I do want to show you guys what this Yoimi is on. She's on a 4-piece Noblesse Oblige set, which won't really increase uh, any of her like normal attack damage or any of her reaction damage like a Crimson Witch of Flames would. 
so this is mostly a support set that will buff her burst. She's also on the new weapon that isn't out yet, which is actually pretty good. Uh, as you can see, the crit damage on it's amazing. It's almost level 90, and the effect will also increase her damage by giving her attack percent and increasing her normal attack damage. Because of her amazing bow, but sort of bad artifact set, the damage from this test run might be kind of weird and something that might not be representative of the character's true potential or how strong she actually is. So do keep that in mind uh, when we get into the showcase. And while this video is me giving my opinion on Yoimiya, I'll try not to be too influenced by what's on the, the test run and more focused on her potential as a character. Lastly, this Yoimiya is Constellation 3. Very quickly, these just will buff her damage. Her first Constellation increases the Oris Blaze duration and will also increase her attack when she attacks someone with that mark. Her Constellation 2 increases her Pyro damage when she crits, which is pretty nice. And she also has her Constellation 3, which just increases the talent level of her E, so not too big of a deal. And in case you guys are curious of her other constellations, her C4 decreases the cooldown of her skill, her constellation 5 buffs her burst, gives it 3 talent levels, and her constellation 6 is pretty unique. It basically gives you a chance to fire another arrow during your elemental skill. As you can see, your normal attacks will have a 50% chance to deal a second arrow that deals 60% of the originals. And I also wanted to mention that her investment is 76,155, so a pretty decent investment, especially considering her bow gives her a lot of crit damage on this Yoimiya. So I'm going to start by just pressing E, no supports, no nothing, and just spam some auto attacks. So the first thing I'm noticing is uh, she attacks pretty fast, and it's very single target, at least her normal attacks are, right? So for AoE, you might want someone like Venti or something to group up enemies. Now what I'm going to do actually is use Sinkshu's Rain Swords just to see like how many times she's going to be vaporizing. Um, while I'm not really like frame counting or anything here, it does seem like there are a pretty decent amount of vaporizes, it looks like. Uh, now do keep in mind, my Sinkshu is Constellation 6, so he does apply more Hydro than uh, if you don't have a C6. But overall, this is a pretty good experience so far. Uh, now I do want to test her burst, so I'm just going to press Q here, see what happens. Okay, pretty good AoE. And then if I swap characters, it should still do like explosions and stuff, right? Yeah. Oh yeah, th this guy's marked. Okay, yeah, so it's just exploding as I'm uh, normal attacking. Okay, cool. Something else I wanted to mention, and something we're going to have to test in a better environment than this when Yoimiya releases, is basically what reactions she can reliably proc. As you guys know, most of the really strong pyro characters right now, like, you know, Diluc, Hu Tao, Shang Ling, they all want to be constantly spamming reactions. They're usually paired with a character like Sing Chu, who applies Hydro very fast, so that they can constantly proc uh, vaporize, multiplying their damage by 1.5 times, which is great, especially when paired with the Crimson Witch of Flame set. Now that means we still have to test how reliably uh, Yoimiya can vaporize and whether or not she applies Pyro too fast, because again, this trial is kind of difficult to test that in, but it is suspected that the best team comps for her will either be in a vaporize team or an overload team where you pair her with characters like Beto. And personally, the team I'm looking forward to the most, one of the ones that I think has a lot of potential and could be really good, is a sort of Yoimiya fireworks comp where you pair her with Beto and Fischl, who are both very powerful off-field supports, make up for her lack of AoE, and constantly proc overload, which is an annoying reaction, but since you can proc it very fast, it will add up. Another team that could be good is a mono pyro team comp, where you're running Yoimiya with other pyro characters like, say, Bennett and Shangling, and also one or two Animo users like Kazua, who can run the Verdescent Venator set, decreasing the resistance of opponents to pyro, and also Kazuo in particular will grant your whole team that pyro damage bonus, which is really nice. On top of that, most Nemo characters, like Kazuo, can clump up enemies efficiently, allowing your pyro characters to shine uh, well, even against multiple enemies. Now for some more gameplay, I got the boss isolated here. Uh, I think I'm just going to use Beta Alt and Yoimiya E, and we're just going to spam some autos. Yeah, so Overload's annoying because it knocks them away, but at least you're an archer, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, I do want to see how reliably we can vaporize, so I'm going to try to reset this fight. All right, so now I'm going to try to vaporize. Uh, hopefully the wet status uh, disappears from them. Yeah, okay, cool. And uh, now we're just going to use her E and just spam some autos. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to attack the boss, I guess. See what happens. It sucks that I don't have my burst up yet. So maybe I could like... Yeah, no, I don't have time. <laughs> All right, so that fight apparently was the last one. But it doesn't matter because while the gameplay we got from her wasn't too long, it doesn't matter because we got to see her scalings, her abilities, and basically everything about Yoimiya actually confirmed for once this isn't leaks, it's official information about her that we actually got to test and review. Okay, so now I want to talk about this character's builds. We're going to use Amber as a placeholder for Yoimiya because I can actually like change the artifacts on this character. And we're going to look, first of all, at what artifact sets might be good for her. 
so that you guys know uh, what you can prepare or maybe expect. First of all, the new Reminiscent set seems like it could be very good on Yoimiya because it gives you 18% attack and 50% normal or charge attack damage, which is great if you're spamming your auto attacks. This buff is given to you if you cast an elemental skill when you have 15 or more energy, then you'll lose, uh, you know, 15 energy and then get that normal charge and plunge attack bonus. This can be great for Yoimiya because it looks like her burst is more of a support ability. Like, yes, the first hit will deal damage, but then after that, it mainly just deals damage from off field as a sort of support. And while we'll calculate the actual DPS and, you know, like the frame data for everything once she's out, it does seem like most of her damage comes from her normal attacks, like by far, to where this set can be optimal on her. Increasing your normal attack damage by 50% for 10 seconds when you cast your skill, so for basically the entire duration, is a massive bonus on top of the 18% attack that the 2Bs gives you that you definitely should consider for Yoimiya. Crimson Witch of Flames is also a set that is worth mentioning because if you are proccing reactions like Vaporize, it will increase that damage by 15% on top of the other 15% power damage it gives you and another 7.5% when you use your elemental skill. So overall for Yoimiya, the set would give you 22.5% power damage bonus and another 15% when you're vaporizing, which could be nice uh, in a vaporize team if that is a viable way to play Yoimiya. On top of that, it increases your overload damage, which could be good in an overload team. However, keep in mind that overload isn't a reaction that does that much damage, especially if you're not on too much elemental mastery, to where this may not be that big of a deal. Other sets that are worth mentioning are Lava Walker in a like a mono pyro team. If enemies are constantly afflicted by pyro, that 35% damage bonus is pretty nice. Retracing Bolide if you're shielded gives you 40% normal attack damage, which is honestly pretty huge. If you're running Yoimiya with Zhongli, who has a very strong shield, Bolide could actually be a viable option. And another set that I want to mention that looks weird is Heart of Depth. I know the Hydro damage bonus is wasted, but you do get 30% uh, normal and charge attack damage when you use your skill, which isn't as good as some of the other sets we mentioned, but it does look like it could be a viable set for her, so I thought I should mention it, but it obviously won't be like her best set. Overall though, I really like this Reminiscence set on Yoimiya. It looks like it's very promising and very good. So this is what I like the most so far, but there are many good options. Uh, even Bolad, I think, has a lot of potential if she's shielded. Keep in mind for the artifacts, we did focus on a main DPS Yoimiya because that is how I believe uh, she's mainly going to be played. Although regarding her viability as a support, that's something we're gonna have to test more in the future. Right now, it seems like she's more of a DPS character, but if you do play as a support, obviously she would need different artifact sets like Emblem or Noblesse. Weapon-wise, there are a lot of good bows. The new bow, which is on screen now, uh, that is a blacksmith bow that came out with Inazuma, does look like it's going to be a good option for her because it increases your normal attack damage by a lot, especially when you have full energy. This damage increases with the refinement quite significantly, and it looks to be a good option for Yoimiya. And then the standard bows seem to be good on her, things like Skyward Harp, Verdescent Hunt, or even Rust, which increases your normal attack by 80% at refinement 5, or only 40% at R1, so it would be comparable and potentially even worse than the free-to-play bow at only refinement 1, but as I showed, it does get significantly better with the refinement. So there will be a lot of good options for her, even a lot of good free-to-play options, as I mentioned, which is definitely a really good sign for this character. And the last thing I wanted to add is when you look at the new free-to-play bow and how it's worded, it seems like it's potentially made for Yoimiya, buffing your normal attack damage by a lot, but even more when you are at full energy, right, doubling it. And it makes me think that Mihoyo maybe wants us to not use our burst on Yoimiya, at least in a rotation, maybe keep our burst up to gain that damage bonus if you're running that bow. And uh, when you do spend your energy, it can be spent with this reminiscence set, spending 15 of your energy to increase your damage. So it does seem like at least Mihoyo is hinting us to maybe use her skill for her damage, constantly spam normal attacks, and then only use her burst as maybe a support ability or when you're about to swap, and even sometimes maybe just not using it for a while to gain other bonuses. Now with all that out of the way, that leads me to the question of how good do I think Yoimiya is going to be? While it is still early and we're not sure, I believe that she'll shine exceptionally well as a DPS character because she can imbue all her attacks with pyro and constantly deal a pretty good amount of pyro damage. The actual strength of her though, like her actual power level, will highly depend on whether or not you can run her efficiently in like a vaporize team or if there's a proper team that can support her because that's usually what makes or breaks a character. For example, the difference between a Deluke just as a main DPS with no reactions versus a Deluke constantly vaporizing, the power level difference between those two are massive and I believe it is the same for Yoimiya. Also, and this is probably my biggest concern with the character, is that from her kit, right, which we fully tested uh, or, you know, fully got to experience, there isn't much AoE. It's kind of like Hu Tao that's very single target, except Hu Tao's redeeming factor against multiple enemies is that her burst has a large scaling. 
Yoimiya's burst has a smaller scaling than Hu Tao's, and her normal attacks are all, you know, single target, which means while she might be good against a big boss, or if the abyss ever changes to just one enemy, generally speaking, this game is highly AoE dependent, to where that can be a legitimate concern, unless there are team comps that can make up for it, like Venti with another support, although grouping up enemies won't change the fact that her auto attacks are obviously single target. And while other single targets like Hu Tao are powerful units, I always make the comparison with someone like Shang Ling, whose Pyronado hits everything around her. Because of how important AoE is, it's very difficult to evaluate uh, just how strong this character will be. Although, I do want to remind everyone that MiHoYo has a pretty good precedent of releasing balanced but not broken characters that are just good but not game-breaking. Like Ayaka, like Kazua, like basically most of the past units have been good but not absolutely busted. So I do have some faith that this character will be balanced. Right now it seems like she's powerful enough to play her if you like her. It looks like she's a pretty decent character, but I do have, uh, as I mentioned, significant concerns regarding her uh, AoE potential because most of her damage does seem to be single target. This does highly depend though on what teams she can be ran efficiently in, like if she has really good off-field supports that can help her in her weak situations, and especially enable her to proc reactions constantly. And as I mentioned earlier, I really like the idea of running Yoimiya with a character like Beidou to make up for her lack of AoE with Beidou's off-field uh, ability that does a lot of damage, bouncing between targets to do damage against, you know, multiple enemies, while Yoimiya is your on-field pyro applier, DPS, and sort of an enabler, for Beto's burst to proc rapidly with her normal attacks and for some reactions. So in terms of her power level, that's my answer. It does depend. I think she's at least pretty good, but it does seem like she might have that single target issue, which might make her struggle in places like the current abyss, where there are multiple enemies at once. And to answer the question of is Yoimiya worth it, I tried to highlight all of her strengths and weaknesses in this video so you can make your sort of informed decision, but I highly suggest you wait until my complete Yoimiya guide when she is out and we fully tested her. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already uh, to see that video and, you know, more information on her when it is out. And this video is a bit different than the usual because it is more of like my thoughts on Yoimiya. It's just initial thoughts on her. If there's anything that I said that I would like to correct in the future, I will put it in a pinned comment. But also, as I mentioned, when Yoimiya does release, I will have a follow-up video, obviously a full guide on her once we do know more. With that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're new, be sure to sub and follow me on Twitch. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.